to undo what I did. These scars we have make us who we are. I'm not meant to go back and fix them. Hello and welcome to You'll Probably Agree. Today I have Tarek Fayumi from Movies with Tarek on and we saw The Flash starring Michael Keaton, uh, Ben Affleck, Sasha Cal as Supergirl, and some guy named uh, Ezra Miller. Oh, Ezra Miller. <laughs> yeah. I'm I don't know s- who that guy is, but he... I, I'm. Oh, oh, yes, honestly. But even though, in terms of... I will say, though... The, the, I w- we won't get into this much, but 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 there's but with the flash alone, though, I will say after what we just experienced, um, it's not this experience was one I will say, it was not monumental, but it was not terrible either. It seemed like it was almost on a very neutral track yeah. of finding some success while yet again bringing back some invigorating storylines, and on top of that, there's just like a weird glitch to this film i don't know what that glitch is but it's one that kind of keeps coming over and over and over <laughs> is it like a visual effects glitch or are you talk about like the story story mm, okay you know the, the that's the thing the movie kind of felt a little contrived in the third act and it was sort of going all over the place yes you Con- know contrived and i do agree if you want to contrive thing of going over the place because won't get into it that much but it's like the whole jumping storyline jumping universes it's it's almost like it's like an algorithm mm-hmm. of a confu- of a puzzle that is misconstrued or one that is trying too hard to involve the necessary factors in a non-correct way going forward into the multiverse. And I, we won't have spoilers of what to experience here, but I want to say, to me, this seemed more like, I know this title is called The Flash. In some instances, a better way to explain it is like a long dash, a dash of more like details, 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 and some unexplained moments. <laughs> right. Well, there's a lot of exposition in this movie like just coming from the start and all the way to the end, you know, it was a little bit like when I saw Inception where I felt like people were explaining what was happening more than just seeing what was happening, which I get it. We're doing this multiverse thing and it's starting to get a little tiresome with all these multiverse. Now here's the thing. I did it. I liked the film. I enjoyed it. You know, it was pure entertainment, but I have to say at two and a half hours or two twenty, it, wasn't always entertaining no. there was a lot of moments where the movie was kind of slowing down and they're still talking because the, the whole theme of the film is the flash wants to save his parents oh. and by going back in time he can open up other universes where he can save them and even go to, and even go into a universe where no one understands the classic film back to the future <laughs> yeah where uh who's who is who, who the guy eric they, stoltz th- that's what they keep of, saying and even if i were in that universe i'd be bonking my head and be like it's michael j fox well that's kind of what was going on exactly with you know and it's funny with the humor in this movie it felt like it was almost intrusive a lot of times where i'm trying to emotionally get invested in a scene but it's kind of got that like last Jedi effect where I'm like, okay, stop deflating the moment with another joke. La- just let this scene play out. Yes, last Jedi effect, and then it's almost like two versions of two different Ezra Millers. Which is exactly what we saw. It's like we see all hyped up and excited Ezra Miller, which is the yeah, one we can't take year old, seriously. Eighteen year old, eighteen year old, really excited. <laughs> Really excited one. The 18-year-old Ezra, I have to say, annoyed the hell out of me throughout the movie. And I get he's supposed to be annoying. Mm-hmm. But then it's also annoying for the audience when it, just with all his neuroses then that we, he keeps presenting. Then we got extremely introverted Ezra Miller. And that's the one we actually take seriously. Yeah, that's the one we like. That's the one we like. But, I don't know, just going off of my notes here. Um, oh, yeah. Did you notice that Ben Affleck didn't have his, like, robot voice for Batman? I did notice that. Right? I wonder if they just didn't think about that or they just didn't think it was that serious enough to have it this time around. Yeah. I kind of think, as honestly, we could, we kind of know he's drifting away from that a little bit. He's only in it for this universe thing, but I don't think. But I do agree. I'm thinking there's something missing in this Affleck character. Why does his voice sound all of a sudden not so strong anymore? Well, I, I kind of liked what he did. He was still doing the Batman voice, and he did a good <laughs> Batman voice. You know, oh, it's yeah. kind of like what I wish he would have been able to do in the originals. But, I mean, the movie started pr- 
pretty well, I thought. Like, there's the opening sequence where there's a collapsing building. Oh, yeah. And Ezra has to, like, run and save uh -huh. a bunch of babies as they're falling through while, the air. While, while, keeping, while keeping track of his, of, his, of his diabetes and his sugar levels, all that jazz kind of thing. Right, right. And, and I, no wonder why he's so specific about his coffee and all the other necessities he finds to be ne necessary to it. <laughs> right, right. And, I mean, th that was a great sequence that, I don't know, it didn't go on for too long. It went on for the right amount of time, but... There was a lot in this movie that was going on, and a lot that was a little overwhelming, but still fun to see. We get to see a lot of cameos we thought we'd never see in this film. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Many, any cameos is probably where the most exciting parts are of this movie, and I'm sure some of you have an idea of it, but like I said, let's not spoil it to get you to go watch this movie and find out what, what, what's surprised about the cameo. That's why you actually got to get up and go to a theater to watch this yourself. Yeah, go up. You experience it with the crowd. They'll, they'll uh -huh. love the cameos. Get, 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 get the COVID crap out of your head and go and actually w get, watch, get, get surprises from the big screen. Now, I'm not being judgmental here, but yes, that's COVID is why we probably saw many postponements and among many other issues, which we will not get into. But I'm just saying, have your movie experiences on the big screen where they belong. Right. Now, how do you think the movie moved? Like, how do you think the structure was of the film? I felt like the structure of this movie was one like kind of where it's like it was set up. Obviously, we wanted to have the Flash character. Mm -hmm. But then after that, they have the Flash character go into like this giant hurdle. A hurdle where it's like setting up for the later films. But then other than that, the main thing, I'm just thinking, wow, in my, in my head, it's almost like, like a Wicked performance. But not actually the performance of Wicked, the song Wicked Defying Gravity. I'm thinking, wow, gravity keeps, ke ke keeps getting them. Where, where, where's the wall for them to stop at? <laughs> well, yeah, it, it seems like gravity is not a problem for Barry because he can run up on buildings. He can save babies as I don't know how those babies how they didn't die oh, hell just yes. from the impact of falling on the ground <laughs> oh, like even yeah, if they were on a stretcher it still uh -huh. kind of baffles me but yeah the structure of the movie it it's in the beginning it had my attention it was pretty good you know you you had a, a great opening sequence where you have a big action scene and we get to meet I'd say like a quarter of our heroes there and then there's the middle act where we get to see some characters, let's say, that we were all waiting to see. And when we get that, I feel like we got almost enough of it. But the way they ended it with that particular character was very disappointing. I, I agree. Like, I'm just thinking, okay, what does this mean? Like, like, it's like they give surprises, but then we don't really understand the meaning of the surprises with this one. It, and plus, it wasn't really much of... Barry Allen alone. Barry Allen on the missions, yes, but not really much of where it's like his sole focus, his sole purpose. The sole purpose of having missions, like the power portion of him, is like the the one problem. You know? Um, I suppose so. Yeah. I I just felt like when we got into that middle act, I wanted to just get into the third act already because it was just kind of dragging and setting things up. And that, that's kind of the problem with this movie is there, it just seems like there's a lot of moments where it's re-explaining the whole motivation of Mary Barry, which is his motivation is to go back and save his parents, right? Yep, the flashbacks are also relatively dragging of this one. And also, yes, yeah. his parents, uh, the whole concept of parents and going back to do the saving is one that serves a big purpose of the flash however at the same time with the universe being misconstrued i just feel all the things that are kind of already finding its disorganizations do not tend to find a, pl a place to settle or anything like that kind of thing because it just you know that that's why that's how i define it as one where where there are some strong connections but even in the strong connection the storyline appears to be poorly written. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it feels like th this movie apparently went through a lot of reshoots and stuff like yes. that. And I, you can kind of tell. You can. And also, I feel like you could kind of tell, even even in Ezra's character, I sense some frustration a little bit kind of thing. I mean, I know it's part of the role, but there are some moments in this movie where he did not look very in tune, I felt. Hmm. I felt. Right, right. I didn't quite get that as much as... What I mostly got was that the movie 
wants to be about the flesh, right? And wants to be about saving his parents. But it's not that engaging or exciting. No, which it is, is not. Which is the thing that kind of, I think that's what held me back throughout the film. I'm like, okay, I'm getting exactly the movie I thought it was going to be, which is fine. But I'm not feeling anything. Like, I, I, like there is that nice little moment towards the end where... Uh, Barry is with his mom and he's telling her how much he loves her mm-hmm. and we get that he loves his parents and he wants to save them but what more is there to this character what more is there to this story I no, there's like there's not it just much feels like it's just going through the exact beats the screenwriter wants you to be in it's like it's yes that's what I mean it's like you know I wish even some directors would have the mindset of other directors, or it's like one seems to have meaning, one seems to have purpose. This one just kind of jumps over moments that can't have meaning or purpose to try and jump into the whatever is the action point of the film, which makes sense for something a little bit of a superhero movie. This one just rushes, rushes, rushes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that was my uh, main problem with it. It's like the movie sort of rushes through its pace, which I get it, it's the Flash is supposed to be fast, but it just feels like it's dragging, you know, and we're just waiting to get to, like, the end act where you just see every cameo. Because that's the problem. Oh, yes. The Flash is just a cameo movie sure. where you're just waiting for those appearances to come. And they never really do. No, you know? they well, they do. They do. They do. What am I talking about? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm out of my head here. Oh, no, you're totally they, they, fine. They, they, we, get, we get the payoffs. We get the cameos. But it's, it's a bit like consuming alcohol it's good after the first drink but then you get so many it just becomes I, sort of well, the same I thing. J- just imagine you know i'm thinking if i could hear maybe in some of the moments of boredom if i could hear a little bit of bane's voice even though his voice to me was rather feminine and not serious that could have added a little bit of joy in some moments oh if you got some christian bale batman yes. appearance as well Again, that's just more. <laughs> yes, that's just more appearances throughout. More a movie. appearances, and then a more misconstrued storyline, unfortunately. Yeah. Again, but you know, still, I enjoyed what was here. I think the action was pretty fun. I agree. You know, the, the action, I was astounded by in many moments, like especially the scenes where Barry has his flash powers, and scenes where you have, you revisit some of the alumni superheroes. Honestly, right, and there, but. I don't know, even with the action, I didn't feel much from that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This film is just trying to think. It felt a little bit too much on the Batman versus Superman level of disappointment. Well, I, I feel kind of bad to say that. I didn't feel that level of disappointment. And as a matter of fact, I didn't really feel much disappointment. I just felt like I kind of saw the movie that was going to be presented to me, which was it's uh, it's a cameo film. It's a film that's meant to trigger nostalgia but like what's underneath it is just kind of surface level you know th- there's nothing that really surprises you or takes you back the only thing that surprises you are the cameos and once that's over yeah it's you know it's, it's a very basic story of can- superhero wants to save someone but can't cameos 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 what, what, what i just wonder even why this is where my frustration of dc comes it's like why can't each superhero like original i mean sometimes it's like this but it was way different why can't each superhero just have like their own storyline before coming together like a lot of what marvel did i feel Mm. that would help create the bigger storyline and the more purpose of literally like how they go forward into mending the storylines i feel dc never knew how me not saying never never but usually they don't have the right idea to amend storylines or start people's or start superheroes out that way. But it was probably that way more because, honestly, they were just in a hurry to get up to Marvel, and that's too late for that now. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to do the Marvel thing with the multiverse. Everyone's doing a multiverse. We just saw a multiverse <laughs> film last week with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And, and I know, I think Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will still kind of be competitive with this at the box office. Yeah, it will be. And uh-huh. Spider Verse is like ten times the better film. Oh, well, and, and but it's like June sixteenth. Oh, this comes in uh, theaters. Oh, 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 and excuse my French, but fuck yes, Spider Verse is better. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, it is. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, per, if but, there if, and I, if anyone's younger listening, I'm sorry, but I'm just giving my honest answer. <laughs> but I like what you were saying about how 
Marvel, they would have individual films that would establish these characters, and that's what would get us invested in them. Exactly. I mean, there's a reason we're I... invested in Michael Keaton's Batman when he shows up, because we saw him in his own movie. We have an idea of how he continues. Ago. We have an idea of what his personality is going to be, and a little bit with the other surprises, which I don't want to spoil, because it's a big surprise, unexpected, right. but... Yeah, towards the very end, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, they, they, they and that's the thing. The movie elicit surprises but it doesn't elicit much emotion it's very surface level it's very uh it's very much a movie that wants you to just see it for who's in it and for the heart of it it's okay it's not much i mean if i saw an individual movie on flash alone not flash but like some of these other characters i'd be more invested but, you know, we never got, like, a solo Ben Affleck movie. We just got Batman versus Superman. Oh, yeah. And we did get... Oh, well, that's a spoiler. I can't give away who else shows up. Oh, well, that's fine. That's not that big of one. That's really not that big of one at all. But come to think about it, though, I'm just thinking this is just... Like, you're right. Like, I mean, Superman had his own of Man of Steel. But then how did that storyline go? That well, one kinda... they, they, they still piggybacked off of it. And they exactly. had General Zod show up. And that's sort of what f- throws everything adrift. I feel the Superman franchise is already kind of ruined when they did Superman Returns. Even though they had time to restart, they didn't really do it properly. Yeah. Well, Superman Returns is a classic uh, example of a movie that came out and... You know, they, they, they didn't have the actors they wanted. It was mainly Kevin Spacey was the one only, really, well, monumental role for that as Lex Luthor. I thought he was actually a good Lex Luthor. He, Lex I Luthor agree, but Brendan to... Routh, oh my God, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not going to get into Brendan Routh, but just, there was something off about that film, and I don't know what it well, is. Well, it's because he had to do an impersonation of Christopher Reeve. And that was and, hard to do in that Yeah, time and they only cast him because he looked and sounded like Christopher Reeve. No. You know, so th- that's probably what it was he was probably trying to channel in mr reeve and you know that that didn't quite work out but it's funny when i was watching michael keaton's batman in this he almost seemed like he was phoning it in sometimes where he was just using his regular voice rather than the batman voice i get it they know he's batman and all that when he's talking to both berries and you know it was cool to see him do some cool fighting scenes can can he move his head in that cowl still or does he still have to shift his shoulders and turn around and do it. I think he unfortunately kind of has to shift his shoulders a little bit. Yeah, That's yeah. just me. But I mean, however, I will say Keaton has got guts to still do this. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, all you need is just like a CGI guy and stuntman. And and Michael Keaton is already, I think he's in I think he's in his 70s. 71 actually. to 72, something like that. Yeah, and he's still and he's still pretty active doing this stuff, though. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's great to see him active and doing that, uh, but boy, you, you know, there's, I, I kind of just wish I had a little more from this film from the heart of it, rather than just, there's just, it's just boring, the same old story again and again Bor- and again. Boring. And it's not a boring movie. I, I, I want to, I want to clarify that. I don't think the movie's boring, but I think that the story can be a little exactly. familiar. Exactly. Like I said, the lacking structure, you know, jumping, jumping of universe sections that are confusing. Well, not confusing, confusing, but confusing to make yourself have questions like, okay, what's the meaning of this? What's directing us to this? What's the concept of fixing this? What, um, what, how is this going to fix the universe? There's just my, my mind was just blown of universal questions. Right. Would have inaccuracies to them. Right. Because, yeah, there did seem to be a lot of scenes that. I felt like we're in an ast- it's like an astronomy class, a cosmic journey adventure of a misconstrued multiverse. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> At what point in the movie do you feel like it started to drag? Cuz I think like it was before they found Bruce Wayne. I sensed an I sensed I sensed Oh, you got to talk closer to your mic. Sorry. I sensed a moment for a drag. Literally in the opening, because the opening did not really have the most formal introduction. I mean, an an introduction you'd expect for a Barry Allen character, but kind of jumped right into it. Yeah. Without giving us a foundation set up. Yeah. So I I thought this movie would give us so much more foundation to The Flash and the upcoming of Barry Allen alone. Was there any of that? In a weird context of a way. There was. There was with his family and how they love him. But, and then how he gets his powers, which, 
Oh, that's where it started to drag. When he had to get his powers and give it to the other um, oh. Flash. Because there's two Ezra Millers in here. Because if you didn't feel miserable enough with one Ezra Miller, you can get two. That I agree with, for and sure. <laughs> yeah, once because that, that sequence went on for a while. We had to get his flat. Uh, we had to get his powers. <laughs> oh, yeah. It sure. was, th th that's, that's where I kind of was starting to go, okay, when are we going to get to Batman? Because that's how I felt a lot of times when I was watching the movie. Like, when are we getting to Batman? When are we getting to the cool stuff? Cause oh, yes. Batman is honestly the centerpiece of this Flash movie. And I think they know that, and I think that's why they're marketing it the way they are. Because they know this movie is not going to get butts and seats with Ezra Miller. It's going to get butts and seats with Michael Keaton returning uh, to his uh, titular role. As in Michael Keaton says, let's get nuts. I think this movie gets you more nuts with Batman than it does with The Flash. Yeah, it does. And, <laughs> I felt that way. And with Superman. <laughs> yes. They, they, they got all of that because like, we have a, 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 a foundation with, with film history with those characters. And The Flash, you don't have that, really. So you can't really get as invested in him or his story. And now I'm just thinking, imagine imagine if all the superhero stuff in the background, imagine if somehow, which I doubt is going to happen, I thought to myself for a little bit, I thought to myself, what if somehow Joel Schumacher's Batman is tied in? But I don't think that's happening. But I would add some weird nostalgia if that ever could happen. Well, <laughs> it kind of did. You yes. Know. But can't, can't the, the, how many, uh, I'm going to need a, a quarter every time I say I can't spoil that. I know, yeah. right? Because we want to spoil this, but we can't. No, that, that ruins it. It's ruins exactly. the point of a review. I know, right? But, um, I mean, but with, this, but with The Flash, though, do you ever just think, you know, a little bit to yourself, like with this movie alone, kind of like, like, okay, like... Who's the one DC character who we can kind of think uh, has the stronger storyline going forward? If there's anyone with an individual one, I think I think Aquaman just a little bit kind of thing. But I think even I don't Aquaman. I remember his story at all after I saw that movie. I mean, I think. I, well, I mean, with a stronger <laughs> with a stronger backstory, I think Aquaman kind of had a stronger one. But otherwise, both of them are kind of not at the greatest level of excitement now. I don't think. No. No, and I think once you get over seeing your favorite heroes once again in their suits and all that, you, you, there's not a lot to remember and, the movie off of. And, you don't have you don't have like your snap moment from Infinity War. You don't have you know what like some of the best scenes from other movies. As a matter of fact, like the final fight seemed to just happen in this base far off into somewhere, and nothing got destroyed because of all the criticism Zack Snyder got for, you know, destroying half of Metropolis. And plus, you but know, it felt a little un underwhelming when we got to that final scene. And DC, you know, even thinking about films like this, think about it. They kind of took a big drop when COVID happened, as many studios did, but to market all their stuff and then put it on HBO Max kind of thing. Or Max. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I don't know why they had to change it. This is year 2023. How could people not understand the difference? Yeah. You know, but, uh, but yes, but I feel they already took the biggest profit they could with putting that Justice League four-hour cut mm -hmm. on on Max now, but HBO Max at the time. But what I'm saying is the excitement of DC lacks right now, and I think the lacking aspects is seen in The Flash alone. But there are so many other factors that contribute yeah. to the lacking experience of this movie. And I think for anyone who's just kind of coming in to enjoy the film, you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed it, you know, yeah. but I didn't, I just wasn't really invigorated by it. No, I was not invigorated at all. Yeah, that, that, that's that's the thing. It just feels like it's it's running around trying to grab whatever you remember and get you excited for that. But the rest of it is just a very average superhero film. With average superhero problems, you know, we want our character to save his mom, you know, kind of like how Peter Parker would love to go back and save Uncle Ben, but he realizes he can't for a very particular reason. You know, we're also, well, that that spoils Spider-Verse. Uh, oh, oh, people have seen Spider-Verse. We're, we're way past the embargo on that, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like he wants to save, you know, his, his uh, loved ones in that movie, we'll just say. And there's a reason he can't. And this movie has the exact same plot thread. Exactly. Like, I, that's, I see where you're coming from. 
Like how, like now only, okay, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to spoil this aspect, but I do not care. And I'm sorry, Mike, but. Okay. Like Ezra Miller, p- p- of course, playing Barry Allen, having to go find the other Barry Allen of himself. Then re- yeah. making that Barry Allen realize that he has to save parts of the universe or do things differently so things go differently in his universe. That is where, that's what I'm spoiling by not giving any more, yeah. but that is kind of... That's kind of where all thi- these yes. movies go. All these movies are like, you can't go back in time and change this because then you'll create a problem here. Yes. And we're going to explain the multiverse to you and all the different portals. Well, and it's like, you know, that'd be great if I didn't see Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse the week before. <laughs> Which kind of, like, like all these movies are using this multiverse aspect to uh, give us nostalgia and also give us something new. But it gets, it's it's like a magic trick. It gets even, tiring after you see the trick. Even M. Night Shyamalan kind of made a multiverse, which I hope he doesn't continue. No, no. Like, where did he do that? Remember talk about how he did split? with glass. Split glass? Yeah, well, ugh. I mean, I'm just thinking, okay, this make it didn't add much at all. No, it didn't. But, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, some directors good, but honestly, I think when you continue a multiverse for a long, long, long time and then make changes, especially due to all the actors involved kind of thing, you're always going to hit a plateau, and then you don't have time to fix it. Right. And I, th- they definitely created one huge plateau towards, like, the end of the film that I can't give away. Give me another quarter for that. <laughs> I did, that kind of pissed me off when that scene happened. I know, yeah. right? And I was like, wait a minute. You, like, oh, shit. Well, you, you go through all this effort to bring back this character, and then you do that? Are you kidding me? And not only once, but twice? I know, like, right? That is a stupid, like, what are you doing? And that, that that was like the one moment where I kind of got taken out of the movie. I know. I just said, okay, you know what? They did the one thing I didn't want them to do. I'm out. I know, right? That, like, to me, it's almost like like what we could call it kind of thing is like, like you know how you're saying, G- give me a quarter for each time we spoil it? To me, given, given these spoilers aren't really special spoilers kind of thing, right. to me, a better way to... The, a better way to call it, kind of thing, is a is a is a can of the fuck ups kind of thing with what they did in yeah. the plot line. <laughs> I, I feel like in the, I feel like there's going to be a lot of fuck ups. Like in oh, the beginning, oh yes, there already like, is. In the beginning, uh, Barry does something, but I don't get how he necessarily did something other than grabbing a can of tomatoes. You know, and then yes, the can of tomatoes. I'm like, okay, like wait, that that's what saves your parents' lives is I getting a, a can of. Wait, a, what did he do? Uh, I don't get I, it. I, I, I'm thinking a fucking can of tomatoes is the answer to all this big crime and drama. Where's the melancholy that makes meaning here? You're creating melancholy out of, out of personification, almost like Lord of the Flies, hmm. <laughs> which is a book. But my connection is an item. Is like what state makes meaning, yeah. and that's the goddamn item. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, it was it was more just like a practical <laughs> plot hole where I'm like, I don't get how that saved a anyone. Weird, a weird practical illusion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know if I were to rate this movie out of four Guinnesses, uh, I would give this movie three out of four, but it's a very weak three. It's like I'm not. I was like, it's I, just good enough. I'm, my, but, mine, yeah. I'm jumping back and forth a little bit, but to an extent, the one thing that kind of saves its ass is its creative kind of unexpected surprises. But other than that, yeah. Other than that, the rest of the film keeps finding its mediocre moments and doesn't know how to salvage them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because once you get over the, oh my god, it's Michael Keaton. Yeah. La- 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 later on, later on, you're like, "What the fuck happened?" <laughs> yeah. Later on, you're like, "What? Why did they do that? That doesn't make any sense." Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of other moments where they're introducing different portals and different worlds, yeah. and that's that, that. That was my the most satisfying part. I think will be for anyone. But now I'm just tempted to go to a comic book store. Let's find all the very first comics 
of the Flash, literally. And let's go back and do like a chronological thing, seeing how faithful this was. And we'll find we'll find a lot of unfaithfulness. Well, I, I even I, though I know the comic books probably aren't in it. Probably. I keep thinking the best way to make a best Flash movie is not to have all these other characters in exactly. the movie and just focus on the Flash. And it, it, we that's not gonna that's not gonna sell tickets. You're, you're, I mean, you're, you're it's on the it's on the freaking poster. You got. You got Bat the Bat Cave with the Flash standing in there. It's not Bat, and also this is not Batman's world, obviously. I mean, even though it's marketed to be with the background of it, but we all know why, kind of thing. Well, yeah, I mean, after Ezra Miller went and did all of his crazy shit. Oh, God, yes. I mean, I, I, I don't even know where to begin with. But and and I, I, I don't know if we should, like, should we talk about, I mean, uh, I guess finally, to see We kind of have room. to. I feel we don't have to get that into it, but I'm just going to say... Ezra is lucky this movie is getting the marketing that it is getting, even though it may yeah. not be the accurate marketing. It's marketing to what is deserved mm -hmm. based on how he's getting this second chance to maybe even continue. Yeah. But at the same time, I still think there there's a lot that needs to be done before the, to, to, to redeem this franchise even more, even though they did with just the first Flash. I mean, not redeem completely, but... Right. And is this movie supposed to be the one that wraps everything up with the Snyderverse? Because, like, Pretty they're advertising much. it, but... And, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know if it really wraps it all up, but it, it just kind of creates more problems. I mean, I was looking <laughs> at the timeline before this, even though we don't want to get all dramatic with everything, but I will say, you know... The timeline of events. Production with this film was basically already kind of done yeah. by the time when before Ezra started having problems. Then, of course, COVID happened. Of course, all the travel bans come in place and more of his problems continue. But he keep kept blaming COVID for I mean, as all of us were mentally struggling. But a lot of that, though, to me, though, and I'm not going to get into detail of all the things he did, but. The fact that he still has marketing and got to remain yeah. a big part of this movie, that's obviously the studios protecting him at yeah. this point. Yeah. So how many givenesses would you give this movie? I'm going to give this one two and a half. Ooh, see, I, I was getting close to that yeah, two and a half. I still, I still might, I don't know, maybe I'll go back on my review and change it. Like, I found it entertaining, but I also found it slow. Because mm -hmm. I'm just like, all right, they're going to stop Zod. All right. Zod, yeah. Zod, I actually felt they needed to have a little more enemy communication he in this. He didn't. He we didn't. didn't he just fought. Because here's the thing. When you fought Zod, and it's in the trailer, so I'm not giving anything away here. Uh, when they fought Zod, it, it wasn't like Man of Steel where. No. I would find him. Yeah, where, yeah, it wasn't like Man of Steel where everyone's getting killed in Metropolis, partially thanks to Superman. They very intentionally have this take place like in an airport <laughs> hangar in the middle of some gulag, and that's where the big fight is. And I don't know, it just felt kind of anticlimactic for a big ending. Like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of explosions and characters fighting each other. But it's just, just this one singular location. I'm going, boy, that's it? Okay. This film, needless to say, needs improvement. But in the end, in the end, it's definitely one that people will see. And I, I say where I stand with, I believe my review stands where it stands. You know, I'm going to write a written review saying the two and a half out of four. I think that's where it stands. But if you want to know to what the unexpected surprises we talked about, you have to go see The Flash for yourself when it opens in theaters next weekend. Yeah. Or you could just go online and just find out. Of course. Yeah. The internet is wonderful for many things nowadays, yeah. including AI. And by the way. For those, Ooh, yeah. by the way, for those who are letting AI take over them, don't let it yeah. take over you. Don't let it. It'll kill us. It already is. <laughs> that's why Batman still has all that analog technology. Yes, definitely. He still does. And I just wonder, what would Batman actually do with Siri? What would Batman do with a lot of things yeah, like I don't that? Know. <laughs> Siri would just turn on him. Yes. You know, that's why he has that old cave and computer. But yeah, I felt 
I felt more caring. I cared more for Batman than I did the Flash. I did too. I'm movie. thinking. I'm thinking. Batman needs some action right now. Batman needs to come out of the dark. Yeah, I was like, come on, have Batman do more Alfred, cool Al shit. Al Al Alfred's dead. Get off your ass and do more stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a spoiler. I mean, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> but that actor's <laughs> been gone for a while. He's a very old man. I forgot uh, his name. His name's Michael something. Also, he's another Michael. Oh yeah, I the guy who they had briefly as Alfred in this one. Briefly, it's not a big Jeremy spoiler. Irons. Yep, Jeremy. <laughs> I felt like that, that was Ben Affleck's uh, Batman's. Alfred. I felt like he kind of fit the Alfred in this one a little bit, but otherwise, um, yeah. then you had um, Anthony Circus play Andy Circus or whatever playing the Bat, playing Alfred in the recent Batman yeah. film, which was very short lived. And then, but of course, Michael Keaton is no Michael, no Michael Caine. Michael Caine is Michael the best Caine. best Alfred there is. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's because he was the best Alfred because he wasn't just serving the drinks and, and you know, giving the tea. He was the guy, he actually would get on Batman's ass and be like, fuck you, sir, you're doing this wrong, <laughs> you're making yourself a vigilante. <laughs> Why are you ruining the city with this Batmobile? No, he was actually like what's, a mentor. What's, what, what's the point of doing all those push-ups if you can't lift a bloody log? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's because he, like, knew him as he was younger. He, so he's like, <laughs> Well, he worked with him as Batman, and he would tell him when he was doing something wrong, and he was like a fatherly figure. Which, Alfred's always supposed to be that, but you never really quite get that until, like, Batman Begins, where you see Alfred no, actually telling no. Batman off. And now you make me want to revisit The Dark Knight, which I'll be able to do in this retro replay series at some landmark movie theater they're doing, where they bring some of the films of Christopher Nolan back in 4K. Mm, yeah, but... I don't know if he'd like it in 4K. He wants it on film. I know, right? But I'm sorry. That, that, the Dark Knight with Heath Ledger is just still hard to dismiss. Well, right? that, that, again, that's that's the main thing that DC has, which I got to say, thank God they're not connecting that universe. They better, Leave no, it alone. They better not. I wonder if they would have if Heath Ledger was still alive. No. No, they no. Christopher Nolan would not have wanted that. No, really? no. None of those guys. Uh, I, I think that's somewhere in his contract where it says, don't multiverse my films. You know, oh, yeah. Or it's either that or Christian Bale just doesn't want to come back, you know, unless Christopher Nolan is involved, which, ooh, man, if we got a fourth <laughs> Dark Knight film, wow. I remember yeah. seeing the Dark Knight um, in IMAX. Oh, my God. That was like a beyond crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, that that was, it was IMAX is an experience, you know, one that you can't really replicate. And this film, honestly, any format does for it. You don't have to go out of your way. You don't have to go on IMAX to see. Don't this. pay. Don't pay that extra money. Yeah, you <laughs> if can you don't, see if, it unless on, you're really desperate to. Yeah, you can see on a regular screen, and you can get the same amount of emotion or lack thereof in this film. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, so for me, three stars for Tarek, two and, two and a half. half. I might go back to two and a half. I'm not sure, <laughs> but, but yeah. I'll see. I'll see by tonight when I start writing and go, going for that red eye tonight and just writing all night. But Tarek, red movies with Tarek, check him out on moviesofterek.com. Yep. Is there any final thoughts you have on the movie before we I, wrap up? I just want to say, um, just want to say, you know, movies like this is the height of summer at this point. We're going to get a lot of good ones, a lot of bad ones, but ultimately. And some in, mediocre ones. <laughs> in the end, though, thankfully, things are entering streaming much more early than expected. So if you're really that nervous about spending the money due to hard time to the economy, don't worry. You'll probably be able to find this movie and many movies on viewing on, on streaming platforms earlier than you anticipate. So. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure The Flash will be up here online mm -hmm. in a flash. Mm -hmm. But we'll see depending on how much movie, how much movies, what? And depending on how much money they make. Oh, yes. I think it will make money the first week, but then I think it's going to have a strange plateau. Yeah, I think so. I think the first week this movie's going to make a lot of money. And then the second week, once everybody knows all the things. Then it's going to tank. Yeah, exactly. Once yeah. you get past. Then Spider-Verse will keep making money. I think so. because I think Spider-Verse will probably take it at the box office once again not this upcoming not not my I mean not when this opens. week but like the next week yeah like it'll oh, still hell be yes. ranking yeah because that movie actually has a lot more hearts and yep. originality to it in this movie and, and then and now just relies and now, on nostalgia oh god now then i'm watching transformers rise of the beast thank god that's not michael bay but talk about summer movies oh my god uh, we watched two multiverse movies now a robot movie I'm, I'm kind of glad i have a business obligation <laughs> tomorrow oh yeah yeah, but for, but thank you for coming on, Tarek. And guys, if you want to see the Flash, it's hitting theaters June sixteenth. 
and it's mediocre. Medio- <laughs> me- mediocre at its finest. Have yeah. a good night. <laughs> yeah, all right. Bye-bye, folks. And bye remember, bye. if you want to check out You'll Probably Agree, you can check me out on social media at YPA Reviews. The YPA stands for You'll Probably Agree. You're strapped to your parachutes. Where's yours? 